Welcome back to Inside City Hall. Tomorrow is August 1st, and that means the school year is coming up fast. And there remains an intense amount of uncertainty over what it will look like when the schools open and the impact on students and their families. Mayor de Blasio and Schools Chancellor Richard Carranza held a meeting today to talk about what the guidelines will be. They're aimed at te keeping teachers and students safe. Schools are set to partially reopen in September with a blended learning model. That entails some students heading to classrooms two to three days out of the week and learning remotely at other points in the week. What does all of this mean for city families? Joining me now to talk about this and more is the founder of the New York City Parents Union, Mona Davids. Welcome. Very good to see you. Good evening, Errol. Thank you so much for having me today. What is your um, sense of how remote learning works just out, on the face of it? I know you have at least one kid who's in the system. Uh, did, did, it, did it work out uh, this last semester? Do you think um, students will get um, 80 to 90 percent as good of an education by remote means as they would by going to the classroom? Um, in answer to that, I would say it depends on, on the school. Uh, my son's school had a very robust remote um, learning experience, but as many educators in the New York City public school system will tell you, not all schools are created equal. So some and schools so have a better, better system than others. What we need is mm -hmm. we need high quality remote learning across the across the school uh, system that is consistent and that's what we do not have the the thing that has struck me about the plans so far are the steps that would be taken if somebody turns out to test positive when a classroom will be put on isolation for a day or for two weeks and then if it's multiple classes the entire school shuts down it seems to, and then the, the background infection rate for the city as a whole might determine whether the whole system shuts down it seems to me that there are a lot of really important consequences based on variables that most parents really can't control at all um, that level of uncertainty I guess is what I'm trying to get at what what um what do you plan to do when September comes around well the decision that um, that I've made is that I will not send my son um, back to school for in-person learning. Um, my my family has decided to do remote learning because right now there's too much uncertainty, too much is unknown, and the risk is simply too great. I you know I and many other families feel that the Department of Education Mayor de Blasio and School Chancellor Carranza are playing Russian roulette with our children's health and safety but not just our children but also with um, the safety the health and safety of our teachers of our school staff um, there are too many unknowns um, with what they've uh, rolled out today and um, it's just not worth putting um, anyone a child a teacher a school lunch worker the custodians anyone at risk uh, the department of education needs to do better um, they should delay the start of school um, in-person learning they should work on remote learning and there are schools out there that have done a great job doing remote learning um, towards the end of the last school year and i think maybe they should look at uh, schools like Success Academy and other schools that um, have, at this point, mastered remote learning. Mm. Th there were other school systems in the country. Los Angeles comes to mind. San Diego comes to mind. Where they made a decision. They said, we're going to just do all remote learning, uh, which at a minimum gave those parents some certainty around which they could make plans and uh, manage their own expectations. What I see us going into is a situation where your expectations can just be upset on, on any given day. Um, you're part of these kind of conversations. Did the city, did our city ever seriously consider a complete shutdown of the kind that you're describing? No, no. And the Department of Education survey didn't really even give parents uh, that option. At this point, what what they've outlined to parents is it, it, it's it is not consistent. It is not stable. So for parents, how do how do we arrange for childcare? If our child is in school one to two days a week, what about the rest of the days of the week? What are we going to do about childcare? Is is Mayor De Blasio 
what's the status of the child care uh, credit or voucher for parents? And then what happens if there is a COVID um, infection in the school and the school is shut down or at the very least uh, your child has to go into quarantine for 14 days it's not just the child but it's the it's the it's the it's the mother it's the father there may be a grandparent in the house there is just it's too high of a risk mayor de blasio and and um chancellor carranza had an opportunity to do the right thing and shut the schools in early march they did not and because of that, you know, we had we had a few, uh, quite a few fatalities, you know, within the school family with with teachers and with other school staff workers. You know, we don't want to repeat all of that. We believe that the mayor and Chancellor Carranza needs to put the safety and the health of our students, of our teachers, of our school lunch workers, of our custodians, of our school staff, our parent coordinators, everyone that's in the schools, they need to put their health and safety first. And they need to delay this. They need to roll out remote learning. They can start next week or the following week, get, you know, get these iPads or the Chromebooks back out to students. That's what they need to focus on because it's simply mm. not worth putting anyone, any child, uh, any educator's life at risk at this point. Um, you know, uh, I, you know another, I, I, another level of, of complexity I wanted to ask you in our last minute. Um, what have you heard? I know some questions came up about this, but uh, there are a lot of yellow school buses that crisscross the city every day during the normal school year. Uh, not mm -hmm. everybody's taking public transportation. Do we know if there are plans to make that socially distanced and safe? Um, and God only knows what the bus schedule would look like if, you do, if we're doing these three, two schedules. Well, these are questions that parents are asking especially our uh, parents of students with special needs, and they are not getting any answers, any solid answers back from the Department of Education. As you know, when it comes to the Office of, of Pupil Transportation, there's always chaos at the beginning of the year and now more than ever. So we are waiting. We want okay. answers. We want answers on everything, and we're simply not getting them. And that's why we should delay opening the schools in September. Okay. I, I know um, from past experience that though, although you've made a choice for yourself, you'll continue fighting for other parents. We look forward to continuing that conversation another time. For now, we'll say goodnight. Thank you for joining us, Mona Davids. Thank you so much for having me. Okay. Let's uh, take a short break here.